Now, other ways we can gather information is through the uh, SNMP, which is uh, the Simple Network Management Protocol. Now, all my friends over in the security world, we actually like to say that it uh, stands for security, not my problem. So you want to be careful, I'm going to kind of throw that out a little bit, is that SNMP uh, is unencrypted traffic and anybody that's sniffing traffic uh, could easily eavesdrop on your uh, communications, gathering statistics, getting your read-only or read-write community strings. There is a version, version 3, that does use encryption uh, to be able to uh, keep this stuff secure, so just keep that in mind as you're working with it. Likewise, we have the NetFlow technology. Uh, again, this is going to be sending information in clear text. Now, most often, if it's just sending me information about uh, port statuses, uh, things that generate a trap or statistics, that's not necessarily the end of the world when it comes to security. It's when you start getting strings, uh, the read-write community strings, where I can actually make changes uh, to a device or get downloads of your uh, configuration files. That's where I'd be careful. So, all right, I'll get off my security soapbox, and we'll come back to using SNMP to gather the information we need. So the, again, the two main technologies that we can use to create the baseline are just that, the um, SNMP and the NetFlow. Now SNMP is uh, basically a collection of your statistics, uh, like the uh, interface statistics we've talked about, packet counts, errors, how busy the CPU is, the memory usage, and it works in a poll model. A poll means that it's not offering information unless it's asked. So what happens is your network management server that is um, set up to make that request will connect to the router or switch through SNMP and ask or pull that device for specific information, whatever information you wanted to get. Now, this is uh, available on almost every network device, but it is not the end all. So let me, let me talk about that for just a second. When I go to the, uh, to the router or switch with my SNMP connection and I ask for information, a couple of things have to run. Number one, you have to configure the SNMP on the router or switch because it has what's called an agent that's going to work there and respond and get that information. But also in SNMP, it has to have what we call a management information base, a MIB, that understands the request and knows how to translate your SNMP request to the appropriate commands to get information off that device. So you have to have a supported set of, uh, of MIBs on the uh, device that you're polling from, and uh, you have to have make sure it's configured and that it's running so you can get the information. Now, SNMP also supports a trap model, which is more of a push. Now, the trap is where you can set up uh, certain events, certain things that trigger off, that you can say, okay, this is important, don't wait to be asked, push this information out, and we call that an SNMP trap. Now, the Cisco IOS NetFlow is, um, and there's a lot of overlap, by the way, between what I can get with SNMP and what I can get with NetFlow, but NetFlow is designed to be more of a traffic pattern profile. Uh, and it works on a push model, so it's always sending information out to the NetFlow connector or, or collector, whichever device that is you want it to do. And it records traffic flows. Now, it's not like a TCP dump or a packet capturing program. It doesn't get you the uh, application layer stuff. It's just collecting the information from the headers. And a flow is just that. It's, you know, here's a source IP, here's a destination IP. We're using TCP port 80. That's a flow. All that back and forth is a part of the same flow. Uh, if I get a new uh, destination address, same source address, that's a new flow or different port or whatever the case is. So it's keeping track of those flows and uh, storing it locally in its cache uh, anyway, but then it'll also, once set up, is uh, push that information out to your um, NetFlow collector. Now, this will keep uh, information about the flows that are either currently running or ones that are already ended, but it gives you an idea about uh, the uh, directionality of your traffic, how much bandwidth is utilized in each of these flows, and it helps you, again, be able to start looking at um, the uh, way in which your network behaves, how the traffic is flowing to get the patterns that you need. Now, it's a router-based feature, and it's only available on the high-end uh, multi-layer switches uh, like the uh, 6500s and the 4500s. So it's not on all the switches, and it's more designed to be a router-based feature. Now, as far as working with uh, SNMP to configure it, it's uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, you have to create a, a community string. If you like, you can think of it like a password, uh, but it's not technically a password. It's just, I got to know the string to uh, be able to say, I would like to get information. And uh, when you uh, create this, there's just some very, I mean, you can do this with five command lines. Uh, you give, uh, create a community string. So the command SNMP server community, you type in the string, and then you got to tell me if it's a read only, meaning I can just get information, 
or a read write where I can actually push information and make changes to some things in your uh, router's configuration. So uh, community uh, Cisco would, would be your uh, maybe your read-only string. I wouldn't really use it because everybody looks for public and private in Cisco. But I mean the example is you just create a string, whatever it is, and then you type in RO for read-only. Do the same thing with the next string with an RW for read-write. Now the next part is uh, some of the information that we use as far as um, uh, the information gathered by SNMP to help kind of differentiate the traffic. We put in a location and a contact name as well. And uh, we also uh, can create optionally anyway um, a list, right, to be able to guarantee uh, the uh, interface indexes um, that uh, we want it to have. We want the uh, interface index list to stay the same, especially if something reboots. Now, why is that important? If uh, I change interfaces uh, during uh, the, some maintenance uh, uh, session and we reboot the device, the actual internal indexing that the uh, device uses uh, might switch. You know, what was interface one, uh, which was fast Ethernet 00, maybe now one becomes uh, some other interface from some other module. Uh, what happens is, is that as I'm gathering the information, um, you know, my statistics, the information coming to me from SNMP says interface one, interface two, and if suddenly those interfaces change, um, that's going to kind of skew the information I'm looking at because suddenly uh, interface one that was a fast Ethernet is now a 10 gig Ethernet and, uh, and it's certainly showing it by the reflection of more traffic and more uh, information on the counters and that could be confusing. So you have an optional to uh, use the uh, IF um, index persist command to be able to make sure that your indexes stay there. All right, now read write strings are optional. You don't even need to put those in and the location and contact also optional. So to really make um, SNMP work, the most you really need is a read-only community string. And, uh, and that, again, like I said, acts as a uh, password for SNMP. Now we're going to take a look at um, some of the uh, ease of use here with uh, configuring uh, SNMP. Uh, we'll go to the uh, global configuration and just start off with uh, SNMP uh, server settings give you the question mark and uh, we have a few things you can fill in the blank on well communities um, are certainly oops uh, important to us let me mark that up so we can uh, put in the uh, community strings and choose read only read write we're going to go ahead and uh, put in the um, uh, contact we're going to enable the uh, traps on this as well um, we'll put in uh, let's see anything else that I might location information uh, again and uh, we'll uh, take a look at uh, a trap configuration and uh, sending the information off to a specific host. And there's quite a few other uh, options, as you can tell, but these are some of the more common ones. So we're going to have a uh, community string called uh, Cisco that is a re uh, read-only. And then I can uh, hit the up arrow, and uh, we'll make the other community string San Fran. That'll be read-write. All right, now SNMP server, and again, I'm just using the tab to help uh, complete this. Uh, location, uh, we'll say is uh, building A, uh, server closet. Uh, well, actually, this is uh, probably not a good, a good location where the actual device is, uh, but we'll just say that this is building A, uh, and we'll say it's uh, human uh, resources. Just put it in that uh, type of uh, method. And then uh, SNMP um, server, the contact uh, can at, uh, at uh, any email.com, which is not my real address, but you can try it, I guess, if you want to. Just don't get me in trouble if you send somebody else spam. Um, all right, so uh, just like that, that was uh, fairly straightforward. So let's do uh, SNMP server uh, enable. Oops. Uh, and then the enable, we uh, forgot to add the uh, traps. So we want to add in the traps. And uh, here's where I can choose the uh, type of things that I'm uh, curious about sending to uh, my uh, server. Uh, or I can just hit enter if I want. So that enables the tramps. 
Uh, oh, but it says I cannot have uh, both Shamlink and state change interface traps. So um, it took one of them off. So that's uh, what you get when you hit enter like I did. It was trying to put every single one of these things uh, in there, uh, which is probably just a little bit too much. Uh, and then uh, the next part is the uh, SNMP server uh, trap. Um, and now we're going to do um, the, uh, let's see, authentication. We'll trap the authentication and um, maybe... Uh, the uh, ACL failure, uh, so it enables the authentication for uh, access lists. And uh, all right, so again, you can see that uh, you can be very specific about the uh, type of trap. And uh, now let me go back to the SNMP server again and put in the uh, question mark. Uh, the last thing I need is a host. There we go. Now that I've got these traps set up, I need a host to send them to. So uh, that's the uh, one last part. So host, I'm just going to make up an address that is not reachable, but uh, that, uh, oops, and then that host should have an interface. Uh, let's see, we'll version, we'll make it uh, version 2C, and uh, the next part, uh, community string or username, well, the community string is uh, Cisco. There we go. Uh, now I've got the host and the version and uh, the um, string that they need, the one that I have associated is read-only. And uh, from there, I will uh, exit, and uh, we can um, uh, take a look at the uh, show running configuration. Uh, let's see if we can do section uh, SNMP. And, um, oops, let's see. Uh, so show run, let's see what, uh, maybe I want to put in the, um, um, I guess we'll put in the begin SNMP and see if we can get that part of it in. There we go. And there's the uh, enable um, work that we did on the SNMP server. Now, remember, some of the uh, filter commands are different um, prior to the one I was running on the uh, router versus the one on the switch and even with the version of the operating system. So when you try some of the uh, filters and you don't get uh, some of the uh, success, uh, it's just a matter of um, version and uh, product and of course uh, using your question mark so you can see what uh, you're looking at and you can see that I turned on all those traps remember when I just hit enter uh, I took pretty much all of those things that I wanted to see so quite a bit of the um, configuration done but um, that was uh, how easy it can be for uh, SNMP server I might suggest you don't uh, make your traps as busy as I did this one but it was, uh, like I said, a quick and easy way of uh, looking at the configurations.